Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Use your iOS devices to control your home. And I'm going to show you how to put more mayhem in your iPad. Plus, iOS 11.3 is out. Oh, let's do it. iOS Today time. iOS Today is brought to you by TurboTax Live. New from TurboTax. Now you can get a personal review of your tax return with a CPA or EA right on your screen. Talk live with a tax expert as often as you need for tax advice to help you file with confidence. Go to TurboTaxLive.com slash iOS today. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at RocketMortgage.com slash iOS today. Ah, uh, it was today time. Time to talk about your vacuum cleaner, apparently. <laughs> and my or, coffee maker. And your coffee maker. And Lights. what you can do with it when, if you have an iOS device, like an iPhone, an iPad, an Apple Watch, or an Apple TV, which at Warwick Ember Mug. Hello, I'm Leo Laporte. <laughs> I am Megan Maroney. She's got a tiny tree growing in her nose. <laughs> I, I thought perhaps I did. We all have our uh, our little worries about our health. That don't Google them. That's... Don't Google tiny tree <laughs> growing in your nose. Actually, that's it from a TV show. I think you're safe. From okay. That. Yeah. Good. Good to know. This is uh, so iOS eleven point four point B one, according to Scooter X, is the new hotness. That's the oh. beta for the rest of us. And by the way, this should be you. We're just stuck on iOS eleven point three point what. I just think it's point three. Three point nothing. Three point nothing. It's out. I There's mean, no, they don't do a point zero. Oh. It's no. not like three point eleven point three point zero. Oh. They'll save that for point one. Yeah. Point one. Yeah. So what's new? We got new emojis. I mean, uh, an emojis. New an emojis. Thank goodness. There's only two. I really was expecting no, there's more. There's four. Oh, four. There's a dragon, a tiger, oh, yeah. dragon a and skull, tiger. Yeah. And a bear. Oh, that's new. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bear's new. The bear I'm, looks like the monkey, sort of. The bear looks like the monkey. Mm -hmm. But it's bearish. Mm -hmm. There's a skull. That's kind of creepy. The winking skull. Make the skull wink and you've got a, a you know, something creepy. I like the lion because I am a lion. Leo yeah. the lion. Mm -hmm. So I use that one a lot when I communicate mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and it winks. They all wink. Yeah, thank goodness. They link better than I can. They don't link as well as I can. I See, think... the, the eye keeps going. <laughs> I mean, just literally, if you want to send the most mysterious message to someone, a winking skull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me do that. Let me okay. do that. <laughs> and then be very serious, right? Then that, that's, the, that's the key to it all. And, and be then really say, serious. By the way, you're fired. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that to you. That's mean. So let me send that to you. Okay. Now, how do I get it big? Oh, there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, ooh, it's a black background. That's mm -hmm. nice. Or mm -hmm. no, is that just, why is it not moving? I don't know. I think you just sent the, the picture. Just the image, not the ha, ha, ha. Oh, No. I, uh, Did you record? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Send that one. <laughs> there you go. That, that seems to be actually moving. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Save that one. Yeah, for future reference. You see, you see, Your Honor, he John. was harassing me. Anthony. That's meaningful. Yeah, you can save that yes. to others. And other I'll save it. Yeah. I like the bear. The bear is cute. <laughs> The bear is cute. It's true. Let's try it with the bear. Okay. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. I, that's a really, a really extreme blink. Okay, let me send that to you. Sending an emoji. So this is the entire use, my entire extent of my use of an emoji goes, is sending messages to Megan mm -hmm. during this show. 
I like to save them and post them on Twitter, too. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredibly creepy. Incredibly. So also in oh, iOS 11.3 oh, oh, oh. is the battery health. Um, that one I really like. I'm I in really like capacity. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Okay, whatever that is. Who's repeating over and over? Ho ho ho. Oh, that's you. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> ah, it's a scary, creepy bear. Uh, I like the battery. Both you and I have iPhone tens that are relatively new. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I don't feel like it should be a hundred percent still. How long have we had this? Four or five months now. Yeah, was it, it was before? Was it before Christmas we got these? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So should it still be a hundred percent? It feels like it should be going down. So I'm wondering. I mean, one of the things it says is peak performance capability. Now these are brand new phones, but this but this is really more important if you have an iPhone six S mm -hmm. or a seven, an older iPhone, and uh, you want to see if you're battery is currently supporting normal peak performance remember this was the issue that apple got a little bit in trouble for they slow down older iphones with poorer battery life and uh there is a switch if you have one of those you'll see a switch here that says no i want peak performance even if my battery is not 100 percent and that'll stop that slowdown thing but you they apple says but then there's the risk you'll crash and actually, if you have that, please do it and let us know if you crash. Because mm -hmm. there's two big questions I have being the cynic. One is, is Apple paying attention to, how is Apple measuring capacity? Uh, and why is ours 100%? <laughs> and is, is this based on the age of the phone, the actual capacity of the battery, the age of the battery? Steve Gibson thinks not because he says, I baby my battery on my iPhone 6S, so it shouldn't be slowing it down because it's not on death's door. Hmm. Anyway, and then the second question is, Does it, do you, did you really risk crashing? That was Apple's contention. Well, if we let you run at full speed on a battery that can't hold a charge as well, there's the risk that when we up the uh, processor speed and start drawing a lot of amps from it, uh, a lot of watts from it, that your battery will just go... <laughs> And the phone will crash. Your battery will, you know, when you reboot it, it'll start up again. Everything will be normal. So I'm really curious. If you have an iPhone 6S and you've got weak battery, turn off that optimization and just see, does it crash? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Has anybody seen that happen? Leave on, turn back, turn peak performance back on. Because I want to verify this claim that Apple says, well, we had to do that. Because nobody else does it. Yeah, interesting. No other phone manufacturer does it. Well, yeah, let us know. Email Megan at twit.tv or iOS today at twit.tv. Somebody's making a good suggestion. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to download the third-party battery uh, uh, monitors and see if it reports something different. The coconut battery, if it reports something different oh. from um, from Apple's result. Oh, I hate this whole thing. is such a rigmarole. This whole thing. This whole rigmarole. All right. So uh, is this the one? Which one is it? That is this the coconut one? I think it is. Battery life checker. I don't know. Let's open it and see. Oh, perfect. Zero wear level. Mm. So it agrees with Apple. Mm. It agrees with Apple. Zero wear level. Now, I think that that's probably because it's using the same reporting that Apple's using, mm. right? Well, I just uh, ordered uh, my boys. They turned 13 in two I weeks. Saw I saw you debating this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you get? Uh, two SEs from Gazelle, our sponsor. Um, but in the, yeah, I only paid like it was less than, it was like $590 for two, oh. um, which wasn't bad. You know, Huck had bought his own um, 6S and he lost it or it was stolen. It was unclear. It was at the, it was a beach. He did not come home from the beach with it. And um, <laughs> he did not come home. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Mother. I did not come home <laughs> yes. with my phone. So, uh, and then Milo has my old six from four years ago. That's um, one that would be a candidate for battery yeah, replacement. Yeah, and it has like a big black stripe down the side of it. But <laughs> I'm going to get an iFixit, another sponsor, kit, and see if 
um, so can I can replace it. it myself. But, but do the 113 battery thing on the six. I'd be curious what, yeah. what it says. Yeah, on that I one. will. I can't. I won't be able to see it because half the screen is black. But I'll be able to tell you something. Scooter X is telling me the coconut battery actually is a Mac program that you run and then check the phone via USB. Oh, so we'll have it. to do that at another okay. another time. Well, today I wanted to devote to uh, controlling our home. Our IoT devices, our Internet of Things devices, and basically mine uh, are just the, the most essential things in life. Coffee, lights, and a vacuum. Oh, I have much more. <laughs> oh, and a lock. So we need, we need to lock our front door, drink coffee, clean the floor, and turn on the lights. And again. I have cameras, mm. uh, oven, uh, sous vide cooker. I have quite a few things that I control. With fact, when I, so I have a uh, folder on my iPhone and my iPad called Controls, and uh, it could be a lot of things. But what it is is all the stuff I can control, like the remote control from my bed, uh, my Ring Video doorbell, my my all my Wi-Fi devices. I have quite a few of those. My Nest cameras, my uh, this is a sponsor, Lighthouse cameras. My outdoor lights, my Luxor lights, my clock, my Hue lights, I can make them disco mode. Uh, you you have a, a, a one vacuum, a Neato. I have a Roomba, iRobot, I control that. But a lot of them have the issue that I don't, and I'm not going to be able to show them, that you have to be at home to use it. Mm -hmm. So if you have to, looking for robots in your home Wi-Fi, if you're not home, what I like is stuff that, I, like, if I could trigger the vacuum when I'm not home mm -hmm. and see what the cats do with my cameras. <laughs> That's fun. Well, and then you could do that. You can use uh, you can use your Apple TV as a hub sometimes. You can use, there's different ways of doing it. I think it, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see a reason to really start coffee when I'm here <laughs> at home. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Now you actually- Okay, so this is the you're Be really, More You're really ambitious. You coffee brought maker. your coffee maker I brought maker my in. coffee maker, which means I didn't have coffee this morning. So this is the Be More coffee maker and Colleen's gonna help us. Is it more? Is it more? Uh, it is more. Does it so, help you be more? <laughs> it helps. I mean, all coffee helps you be more. But um, so this is uh, it's it, <laughs> Colleen. What is Colleen? Why do you need Colleen? <laughs> I don't actually it's need Colleen. It's supposed to at all home. be automatic. This way, I could sit here and she's gonna fill the oh the so some up. oh yeah. it doesn't do that automatically. Yeah. Um, so it's, there are ones though, don't they? They have beans mm -hmm, and everything, did, yeah, and they just do, do the whole thing from scratch. Yeah, they're a lot more expensive. So Colleen's going to make us coffee? <laughs> yeah, so uh, it has no, a lot of the new, newer coffee makers, you don't have to use a filter. It has that reusable filter, which I like. Um, and then you slip that in there. Is this, this is a paper filter though? No paper filter. This is it's a gold, metal filter. The gold filter. Yeah. And then uh, you pour the water in the top. So we're going to make eight cups of coffee. So you do need to do some stuff You there. do need to do some stuff. You, you, oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I be mother? All right. Okay. Nice fresh water all over us. Uh, uh, so good. We're going to make eight cups of coffee. Good. There. We all get coffee. We can. There, there, I have a pet peeve, though. Yes. And I don't know if this is me that I, what I consider a cup of coffee oh, is yeah. more than that considers a cup of right, coffee or any other coffee maker I've used. Mm -hmm. That's really just two cups of coffee. Yeah. It says eight cups of coffee, right? right? It's like two, yeah. Exactly. But it's like two, right? Yeah, exactly. Is it is it me? Do I you make? Do, am I putting too much coffee in no. myself? I would say like the big gulp is like one cup. That's of a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a say. cup of coffee. Okay, so now let's Eight take a look at my Be coffee. More app. Okay. And oh, here I'm we gonna, are. Do you want brew buzz or craft? What's the buzz part? I, I don't know. So we'll try. Um, <laughs> I guess this is the buzz brews. That's the different. I guess it's going to sell me some. Oh, it's coffee. trying to sell you. So coffee. this also connects to uh, yeah. Amazon, so you can automatically. Oh, that's good though. So you connect, never run you know, out. Yeah, yeah, you never. Thank run you, out. Colleen. Amazon Dash. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much, for, Colleen. For pouring. So I think I just want to brew the coffee. Brew, brew the damn thing. Um, eight like cups. Eight cups. Well, you put eight cups of. Now that's determining how much water you. How much put water? In. Yes. Okay. Um, these were pre-ground. We used our our coffee sponsor here, and we ground it, so it's not like it's not packaged, other, not fresh. It's fresh. We didn't. Uh, well, we yes, yeah, fresh. We just ground it. Okay, we didn't home. Well, let's do fresh then. Didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we, we just ground it. Yeah, it's medium roast. Or did or did it come ground? No, no, we just we ground just it. ground it. So that's when fresh. I say me. I mean, I, do they mean fresh 
Like within the last 10 seconds or fresher than the last 10 minutes? That's a really good question. Let's I taste think and 10 see. 10 minutes is yeah. fresh. Yeah, we, we did it. Okay, it's so fresh. now I can do this like tonight and, you know, we oh, can have coffee. Set the timer? Yeah. Or My Mr. Um, coffee could do that back in 1982. <laughs> no. And it probably didn't cost $170, probably. But did your Mr. Coffee tell you on your watch when you were when it was done? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, so let's go, do the now setting scent brew. Of fresh brewed coffee told um, me when it was and done. And then I can, again, the choice to Look delay the brew or start no, the brew. No, let's do it. And then <laughs> you start haven't had the coffee brew. Yet. And then if you show a shot of the coffee maker, you'll see now it's turned. Oh. It's oh, brewing. It's brewing. Mm -hmm. And a see little, that little light next to it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that says it's connected to the internet. Oh, nice. Um, and it's 30 seconds pre soak and then an estimated time 13 minutes. So I'm assuming we'll still be talking about the stuff. theory being you set that all up the night before. Mm hmm. And then you don't want to get out of bed. You push the button. Right. And then when you get, you know, then you'll just get, okay, it's ready. And you can kind of go, okay, and you can slot it. Right. Like I'll get an alert on my Apple Watch uh, and it says, go drink your coffee, Are Megan. you uh, one of those people that really isn't much good for anything before you have your coffee? Uh, no. I, like I said, I brought this here. So I did not make coffee before I came in. I, w I was okay. Yeah. I don't know. How was I, John? Was I? Um, I live with somebody who's that way. And um, Michael just is a terror without his coffee in the morning. No, I'm kidding. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, there are some people who really uh, need their coffee in the morning. Are I don't. I, I. I. I don't. I don't choose to interact with people before I have my coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. I could if I had to, but I prefer not to. Mm. I'm that. I'm in the middle. So that's good All for right, people like us. That's a good thing to have. Yeah. So, um, I don't have anything like that. I wish I did. Mm, Nothing I can do from here. I can't start the June oven up. Uh, I can see, though, what the last thing cooked was. I can see if somebody's cooking and I can get an alert. Uh, but I can't do it right now because uh, I'm, not, I'm not, for some reason, I'm not connected. I don't know why that is. You know what I can do right now, though? I can see what my solar panels are doing. Oh, that's good. So, we have uh, solar panels on the house. And... This is the this is from Solar City, but you know I think many solar panels would have some sort of. So I could see that they're generating. I could see what how many hours they are. I could see if I go I can go back in time too, and I could see uh, how we did in previous days. Where I don't remember how to do. Oh, here I could see how we've done over the month, over the year, and of course we've had a rainy uh, year, rainy a couple of days. So you can see the power production go up. You can see your lifetime power production mm. look at that i've produced forty-two thousand two hundred seventy-seven kilowatt hours that's impressive that's 42 megawatt hours of juice that i didn't i didn't take off the grid and you can see what's going on right now which actually is really really handy um you can also see the weather so that's important how much cloud cover how much daylight we're going to get 12 hours because we're you know roughly equal day and night so this is the actual power curve going on right now for my solar panels at home. That's kind of neat. That is neat. I have solar panels, and I never have figured out how to log into the app. It's like Sunny Boy Portal or something. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like a rap star. You yeah. got your solar panels from somebody named Sunny Boy? <laughs> yeah, and I assume they're working. Uh, we're not, you know, we pay $10 a month for um, power, so. That's good. Yeah. That's amazing. Especially with all these devices constantly yeah. hooked up to the this internet. This is, by the way, yeah, a good, a good tip. If you're going to do all this, yeah. get some solar, get solar panels. panels. Whew, it can, can really add up. Can you hear that coffee brewing? I can hear. Yeah. Can you, can you smell what mm -hmm. the coffee's brewing? Can you smell what, what is it? Blue Boy? Sunny Boy? Sunny Boy. Can you smell sunny what boy. Sunny Boy's yeah. brewing? It's pre-soaking, which is apparently something That's important. that you do. Very important. Okay. Yeah. You've um, got to so, always pre-soak. Okay. And it tells you the brew temperature, et cetera. So you just put a little dollop of water. Okay, so speaking of coffee, before we get off the uh, the t subject of coffee, I have before spoken of my Ember yeah. mug. I have one of those too. You have, I have the travel one. I have the and ceramic you have the regular one. cup one. So this tells me the temperature of my coffee. Did you know that 127 degrees is the the temperature that I prefer my coffee I prefer at. 135. You do? Well, yeah. then you can turn it up if you I want. I know, I do. I keep oh, mine at do? 135, yeah. Um, so let me show you the Ember app that's kind of cool isn't it yeah so if i if i think oh maybe uh leo knows more than i do i about think when this. archaeologists and future centuries wonder you know investigate what happened to american civilization in the 21st century mm -hmm. this, this will be the moment one They'll of show the this things video. they point to <laughs> and say this mm -hmm. this is what happened yeah 
It's perfect temperature, though, right? It's perfect temperature. And again, on my Apple Watch, it will say your your coffee has reached the perfect temperature. I like that. And so now it's heating well, up. Well, I put my coffee in the cup hot. Mm -hmm. And then keep, uh, my desire is not to heat it in the cup, but just to keep it from cooling off. Right. Right. You yeah. put cold coffee in there and not not ice cold coffee, but, but sometimes I'll put, it gets chilled. Like I will old um, coffee. Make put some old coffee co at home. Oh, you have and old then, coffee. You know, there. it's kind of a little bit cool. Mm. And um, you want to see who's at my front door? This is a sponsor, of yes. course, Ring Video Doorbell. Recently, oh, and and you can listen and you can talk. You can say, "Hey, go away. I don't want you." So uh, that's kind of cool. I think I have cameras. <laughs> I got to point out everywhere in my house. I can also, so if you go to my house, I can see you pulling up. I can see you coming to the door. I can see the whole darn diggity dang thing. I can even, and we use this all the time in the back. See, there's the, the mailman's, oh, the mail, mail carrier just came. Mm. Look at that. And uh, these are the, this is the, these are the Nest uh, outdoor cameras. So they show events. So I can scroll back through time. You know, it's really fun. Watch, I can watch the sun mm. go down. It's nighttime. I can watch the sun rise in the morning. That's cool, isn't it? It is. So yeah. I I don't have any outdoor cameras, but I do have the owl camera that we've talked about before. On your car. Um, yes. yes. And there was some movement uh, at two in the morning. Oh, um, in your car? In outside. And so... Did it but, capture it? Well, you know, it's still in a little bit in beta. Yeah, I find the software still a little bit in beta. <laughs> So I need it needs to be close to the camera, but I think I have been able to cap like go back because you can go back twenty four hours. It records twenty four hours, but I haven't been. Able, I just know that there's movement, and um, I'm gonna figure out who that was wandering around outside at two a.m. Um, Here's what's going on outside my car right now. <laughs> a bush. Oh. Hey, hey, bush! <laughs> Get out of the way, bush! <laughs> hey, you! Yeah, I'm talking to you, Mister Bush. Oh, my, yeah, mine is the front door, so we can see if any, mine's the front door of the office. Oh, look at that. We're both in the Hello. lot. I can also see inside the car. Now, it's less useful, uh, uh, you know, just when it's, oh, look, see my camera at, at my, just noticed some activity in the driveway at home. Oh. Let's go see. Let's go. Let's check the video. What's going on? That's that car we saw earlier at the, and now oh. there's motion at my front door. My phone is a veritable festival of yes. notifications. You're not really controlling anything, but you're seeing it. Yeah. Do you want to control something? I could turn on lights. Sure. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> um, I, you know, so that's one thing. I wish that things like the Hue lights, you have to be on the network to do it. I could turn off the uh, the Wi-Fi, though, mm. <laughs> if, if, if an intruder oh, yeah. comes in. So I have several Wi-Fi networks that I monitor. This is a plume. And uh, and so this is this is cool, but you can if you know this is the topology of all the little plumes. But you can, if you wish, at the moment, turn things off. Here's all of the little plumes that are going on here. How many plumes do you have? Twelve plumes. I have a partridge in a plume. What? I can do the advanced Wi-Fi settings. You see, I turned on the new cloud flared one dot one dot one dot one April Fool's DNS. Oh, yeah. That, I want to do that. Yeah. It's fast. I like it. So that's plume. Then there's also Eero. How many Eros do you have? Uh, five. You have 11 plumes and five Eros. 12 plumes. 12 plumes. Five Eros. But this is even better because this is this is actually one, and again, Eros is a sponsor. One of the nice things, I can check my mom's network because I set her up with Eros. Mm. So I can see what's going on at my mom's house, what her bandwidth is and all of that. So that's actually very handy. My mom's in Rhode Island. But I can remotely, and if I set up, and I could do this, um, the cameras and, and the doorbell and so forth for mom, I could also, if I wanted to, and with her permission, use those. And I know a lot of people monitor elders, par elderly parents and stuff, you know, but you, of course, want permission. My, my daughter uses Google Wi-Fi at home. I can, I can see how hers is working, right? And she's online. And I can see her speed and so forth. She actually has, I think, the, the fastest speed of anybody in the ha in the family. Uh, so th all of these, uh, I think remote control of things like that is, is really, really handy. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. There's my, another sponsor, the Molecule Air Freshener. I can see how that's doing. Turn it on and off remotely. I can see if I need filters. This is wild. And again, I need to be local to do this. 
But this is Luxor makes outdoor lighting that you can control via your phone. It's Wi-Fi. And then you can set up schedules, which is, that's what I really use it for. So when daylight savings time hit, I change the lighting schedule, right? So things like that. You know, normally with outdoor lighting that's on a timer, you can go out to a box and do it. But this lets me do it without, from the comfort and convenience of my own couch. Yeah, because that's really the goal in life, to stay on Never the couch. Never stand up. Yeah. Okay, so our coffee is extracting. It's in the extraction process. We have five more minutes on that. That's probably enough time for me to tell you about my vacuum. Um, You're not going to vacuum the table, are you? <laughs> no. This is, again, like I, I've... I have it connected to my home Wi-Fi, so when I brought it in here, it did not want to connect. Um, so let's take a look at the app. This, her name is Betty. Um, that, that you name your robot? I do. Don't you did name she your robot? Did you name it or did uh, I named it. You can Nito name it whatever you... No, no. I called her Betty. You can Betty. name I can't, her whatever. So they're right there. There's something you can't do with an iRobot. Oh, you can't? No. Nope. Oh. Roomba Roomba's just Roomba. Yeah, no, I can. Um, I don't think. I know I Maybe changed, I missed that feature. I can. I changed her name, and <laughs> I didn't really have a hankering to name it. But so maybe I maybe I just missed. Can that you see maps of the cleaning area with your Roomba? So here's where this is the house, and she cleaned all this area. <gasps> Look at her. I Look know. at Betty. That and is really see, neat. Like, that is our dining room table. That's I, like our. That's um, really cool. You know, our kitchen island. And that's, you know, the TV area. So she didn't clean any of that. Um, what else can Betty do? Well, she, like, for example, if she gets stuck, I get an alert on my Apple Watch, which I can't do much unless my kids are home at spring break, which they were. And then I would just, like, FaceTime them and said, go, go fix Betty. Um, and <laughs> yeah, he, I get a lot of remote r warnings from Roomba, like, you know, I've, I'm stuck yeah. under the furniture. Mm -hmm. I've, my bin is full is my favorite. Oh yeah. yeah. You got to clean them every time. Okay. So I'll sh <laughs> I did manage to take some, some video. Actually my bin is full is in some ways gratifying. Yeah. Because that means that there was something to do. Right. Like right? that, that thing is just full of dog hair and that's why we do it. It's the pet hair. Yeah. 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 And it's, I mean, you still have to vacuum and sweep it's, and everything. That's the reason I don't like these things. It doesn't replace actually yeah. Vacuuming. But like But if you keep finding full bins as we do every right. time, that means it's getting some. And you can schedule them so you're not there. Who right. you know? So here's like my desk uh at home. It's like I can't get a vacuum under there. No, we do that under the bed because it's hard to reach yeah. under the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um yep. so this is a little the Roombas are round, but as you can see, Betty has a flat front. So she gets Oh, um, let me show you. Betty might she be can, better. Yeah, like she can get into corners better. Look at that. She can get around. Um and you know, she maps the whole area, knows where to go. She's, you have carpet that will help you know what Betty's been up to, which yes, is really cool. Exactly. And I love coming home and finding swirls. Yes, I do. I also it love means the swirls. Betty's been here. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh downstairs we have a hardwood floor. She's just as good there. So yeah, here she is going under the bed. Do you ever attach any of this stuff to if this then that or like I have if the coffee's ready, have Betty clean the house or something like that i mean you know i do do that with uh my lock like when i arrive at home the yeah. door unlocks yeah the home you know that, that makes that's me really nervous kit. you trust that so that yeah. makes me nervous because i feel like some bad guy's gonna do that like have my phone well i don't i feel like maybe there's it's like not complete i don't mm -hmm. know like they could unlock the door somehow right yeah. but what am i worried about that's silly under the bed why should i worry about that um, here's the map. Yeah, I love that map. That's the most. Yeah, here. Let's I mean, look that's at the, map the coolest again. thing. Yeah. Look at that. She missed a spot. And that's hey, where Betty, she is. There's you a little, missed a spot. Betty has a little red dot. You are here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Love that. Um, and so that's an exact map of your home. Yeah. If anyone wants. If to. anybody wants to know where the windows and doors are. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Here's. Uh, it we'll also, be sharing that address later. Yeah. Oh, um, look! It's it's gonna clean up Burke. Yeah, you're going to see a little more Betty this weekend on the screensavers. I did a little spring cleaning um, episode. So is she you can just see. not? Is she just like vacuuming in place? <laughs> is she puzzled by the dead person? I think she is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dead body in the in the hallway. Yeah. Um, I think that's she, Colleen's office. Yeah. What did you kill somebody again? <laughs> yeah. You she gotta, did. She's a, yeah. she's tough. <laughs> Burke didn't do his checklist. Yeah. Um, here. <laughs> don't don't try to lift Betty. 
by hand. Okay, uh, here's what That's she looks a heavy, like. Betty is heavy, and she is heavy. And here's what she here's what she looks like underneath. She's pretty good. She has this one little sweeper. Does your Roomba have many sweepers? And then she has this. Do you? Stuff. My Roomba has a thing. <laughs> I call it the Cato Nine Tails. Oh, it's um, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's hard to describe, but it's a wheel with wires, whiskers, and it spins like to. To usher stuff into the bin, like this thing. Like yeah, this it's kind of like that, yeah. but it's uh, it's yeah, it's very similar to that actually. But it's got wires instead of uh, uh yours is a brush. Yeah. Um, well, yours has wires. Yeah, actually, it looks very similar. How much was the Neato? Not cheap. Yeah, they're um, all really surprisingly yeah. expensive. More expensive than $600. a six hundred dollars. Roomba has a, a wet one For that mopping. mops. Oh. I don't trust that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't compared the Roomba versus the Nita or the wet versus the dry, but... Lisa well, loves the Roomba. I actually put the last Roomba out on the garage under my car wheel, mm -hmm. hoping somebody would accidentally drive over it. They didn't. Because it would get up in the middle of the night, every night at 2 in the morning. It would go... Doo -doo -doo -doo! <laughs> and then <laughs> it would get stuck under something and go... <laughs> until I got up... <laughs> Out of bed, I said, come on, little Roomba, put you back to bed and put <laughs> like it back on the thing. charger. Why was it going in the middle of the night? Well, and this new one doesn't do that, but the old Roomba, if it got off the charger, yeah, they're supposed to go back to their charger, yeah, right, and, and charge. Go home. Betty goes home when she's... Yeah, uh, and our new one does, but if it can't, or for some reason, I think our old Roomba... Would try to go home and then and then not make it mm. and stop on the way, uh, uh, uh. and then the battery would die, and the clock would reset and all the programming would reset, and then somebody, not me, would put it back on the charger. It would charge up, and its clock is reset and its programming is reset. And for some reason, when that happens, it thinks two a.m. is a good time to vacuum. Mm -hmm. So I would I would always. When I put it back on the charger, fix the clock. So that may have been a problem with the older one. Yours doesn't have that problem. No. And what do you do about, like, staircases or keeping it out of We don't have any because I don't like to climb oh. stairs. So we bought a house that's flat. So, well, with the Neato, we have, you know, we have an open staircase. So Would just, it go down the stairs? No. I mean, it would. It, it would, would fall tumble, down? Yeah. Oh. Betty would tumble to her death, she probably. Can't, she can't tell that. There's I don't know cliff? what would happen, but there's... You, I think the they, Roomba's supposed to be able to tell. They have these little strips that you just put down oh, and okay. temporarily... Yeah, Roombas her, have yeah. those like little yeah. fences. I don't know. I didn't try. Um, perhaps that I would be... I wouldn't want to try. The, Maybe have Milo or Huck at the bottom to catch her. Yeah. Like a, like a big vacuum slide. Shh, we're not, we're not going to hurt you, Betty. Don't <laughs> gonna, worry. We're not going to hurt you, Betty. Um, okay, so I mentioned my lock. Yeah. My lock is really the only thing that works well with HomeKit. No, the rest of this stuff... Doesn't. Nothing I have kit. works with HomeKit. Nothing? Well, Your HomePod? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is I'm annoyed at her. Anti-HomePod I can't today. talk to my phone anywhere in the vicinity because oh, she decides it's for her yeah. and turns. So I keep going, hey, and then it go, it blinks briefly. And then it goes and it and says, then, I can't answer that on and here. And then the one out there is doing it. And she's not as smart as the one on my phone. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to talk. I wanted to send you a text message. She took over. And so I had to, I actually had to go, I had to leave her presence. I had to go in another room because the HomePod was listening. I have a little beef with that. Yeah. Poor homie, the HomePod. Homie, <laughs> you, you name all your devices. Huh? I do. Um, okay. So let me try to show my lock without, um, without showing my triggering address. It? Uh, well, I think that I actually can do that. I don't know that I have it set up to lock or unlock the. Whose lock is, this looks like the beautiful Nest interface. This is just the um, HomeKit. Oh, that's the HomeKit. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah I've seen can, that before. Yeah. Yes, you can change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like want. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the schlage, slag, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Schlage. <laughs> um, <laughs> Schlagey lock. Uh, schlag. It, Isn't that a terrible name? But I think that's probably Mr. Schlage's name. Yeah, so, so we shouldn't mock yeah, him. it's fine, Mr. Schlag. I love it because is it Bluetooth? Like if you walk up with your phone and it sees the Bluetooth signal, it'll does unlock. it automatically unlock? No, but I no. have it set. Well, I have it set on home automation. So so um, when you join the Wi-Fi, it unlocks. Yeah. Um, let's see. When I arrive at my home address, 
then it will enable the automation, which is unlock the front door. So if someone, if you decide to kidnap me from my workplace, which you all know, and then take me home, my door will unlock. But Gilbert, who's my 100 pound dog, will kill you. Will kill will you. Rip your throat. And, not, out. and very slowly. So no, no one <laughs> out there is going to do that, but. <laughs> it's true. She has a very large, scary dog. Um, um, let me ask you this, though. Okay. I had heard. <laughs> About security issues with Bluetooth locks, like the bad guys could figure out how to snarf it. Mm -hmm. But that's not, but you're saying that you don't pair that to your phone when you set it up. To pair, no, I pair this to my phone. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, someone could probably, it's, I have a glass door. Someone could just smash it. And you know, that's right a in. very good point. <laughs> it's just a suggest, locks, locks and all are these things. just a suggestion. Suggestion, please don't come in. It's really easy to get, and, and then there's the law to back it up that if you did come in and it was locked, then you broke in. Yeah. But you're right. A lock doesn't stop anybody. Right. You could kick a door open. Yeah, here's easily. Gilbert here. So he looks sweet, but this is after he ate a bunny. <laughs> just kidding. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, yes, someone could do all those things really, that you're saying. Really, really large bunny. <laughs> a human size bunny. Uh, what I like about the. What the Fortunately, Betty cleaned up the bunny. Yeah. <laughs> um, Betty. Is so, it time for coffee? No. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It no. was probably ready hours ago. No. Sorry. I um, think you need yeah, some. Yeah, it's ready. Why didn't Good. I get my notification? Fortunately, on my Apple Watch? we have the Wi Fi connected Colleen to pour a cup. <laughs> yes, she's not a Wi Fi connected Colleen. Um, I realize why I didn't get my notification because I have it on Do Not Disturb so that, you know, the messages don't come in. Right, because we're working. Yeah. But really, coffee should always disturb. Yes. Because when you're working, nothing better than a fine yes. cup of joe. Thank you so much, look at, Colleen. Look at what's happening right now. Uh, <laughs> John has just run out the door to get me cream. Oh, he has. He knows how I like my oh, coffee. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Black. Okay, I rest my case. This was eight cups. <laughs> she just poured us a little. I rest my case. <laughs> that is not a big, that's not a long pour. <laughs> well, she didn't think we were going to actually drink it. Oh, who's not going to drink it? I know. I'm, I'm going to pour drink it in it. my mug. Okay, so it stays I knew warm. John was going to get me cream. John's a good man. Um, so, You're the cream in my coffee. So the don't look, but I'm putting okay, heavy, well you, heavy well, whipping put, cream well you, in my uh, coffee. Uh, put heavy cream in your coffee. Because I want to die sooner. <laughs> I will tell you that with all of these IoT devices, they have to solve a problem or they're not worth the trouble, right? And they have to solve a significant problem. I, and, and I think Hue lights are not in that category. No, and I'm not sure this coffee maker is I'm either. I'm not sure that's in the category. The vacuum cleaner, I would say, has utility. Yes. The lock has utility because sometimes, especially if you have kids, they come home and they have no. Key, they can't find their keys. You they don't open know where the, the keys. door for them. They don't. Um, and they, their solution is well, we just won't lock the so door. So that's utility. Yeah, I really like it. And then, like, if someone's coming in to clean your house or to do anything else, you give them a special code, and you know I they like can that. only get in and during a certain yeah, time. Yeah. So I think that that actually has maximal utility. I also think cameras. I was a kind of against cameras inside and outside the house. I didn't show you my lighthouse, but I've showed you before. Um, I have now become kind of hooked on that because I, it's not just humans, pets. And I've talked before about our cats and sometimes we want to know, I, I, we've been on trips and Lisa's been saying, I don't see Paris, I don't see Paris. And she's not talking about the city, she's talking about her cat. And all of these things actually, I, I think are useful. Mm -hmm. So I, I think cameras and security devices like that, locks, see that kind of revolves around security. Those things are, are a little bit more useful. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, I've already talked about these, so um, we've talked probably Those enough. Those are the lights the, you had The put noon in. lights yep. that are scheduled. That they, they Now you can add a schedule, like you said. This, that's what I use downstairs. Oh, that's good coffee. It is good coffee. It's smooth. It's delicious. It's worth $179. <laughs> uh, if you're thinking about getting a new coffee maker anyway, and you're not, like, disturbed by the fact that all your devices are connecting to the Internet... I think that it's worth it to be able to know I when I would like to ready. invoke Higginbotham's law here, however. Mm, what's Higginbotham's law? So Stacy Higginbotham, who, as you know, is a host of This Week in Google mm -hmm. and also is an IoT expert, has Stacy on IoT podcast. She has the IoT newsletter at stacyonioT.com. She said, and I think this is really true, number one on any internet-connected device in your home, it needs to be firmware upgradable over the air. Mm. By which I mean you don't have to take it and plug it into a USB port to upgrade it. And actually, there's a lot of stuff you can't even do that way. It should be, and 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 this is true even of my routers. All the routers I showed, 
Eero, Plume, Google Wi-Fi, they can push an update. And since routers especially, but anything that goes online needs to be fixable because there are bugs in any program, in any software, and it should be fixable by the manufacturer with a push update so that you don't have to go around. Look how many devices you have. I, I counted, I have 65 internet-connected devices in my house. If I had to go around and update them all, they wouldn't get updated, and some of them wouldn't be updatable anyway. So really important to underscore this. Anything that's on the internet in your house is potentially a, a, a gateway to malefactors into your network. And that can be horrendous. So, you know, you don't want somebody looking at you through your camera. Make sure if you buy it, you're buying it from a reputable co company and, you're, and, and that you have the insurance that they have firmware can be updated over the air and that they will maintain that device for some number of years. That's really, really important. That's Higginbotham's law and That's I want to give her credit. My other law is that you can, uh, and this is mainly um, my husband's law, if you can operate it by your phone, you can also operate it the other way by pushing a button. Yeah, I think that's really true, except I have Hue lights, right, in my office. I didn't put them in the rest of the house because I knew it would confuse people. And still, people come in my office and manually turn off the lights, which means the Hues no longer work. Yeah. So I have mixed feelings about that. I don't know. Ex uh, it, when you turn off the Hue lights, there's nothing they can do. They're off. And then when you turn them on, they come on you know, fairly bright. I guess you can set that now. That's different. But, uh, and I don't, I don't know if I want to put a sign on all my switches saying, don't turn this off. But people come into, because they were doing me a favor because they think I left the lights on. Yeah. Or, but these are motion sensitive lights. So every time somebody comes in the room, they turn on mm -hmm. and they go, oh, Leo left the lights on. They turn off the lights in my room. And then I get home, I walk into the furniture because they're supposed to turn on and they didn't. And then I go, oh, somebody turned all my lights off again. I have to go through and turn yeah. them off. That's interesting. They should have, yeah, the noon lights, if you use them by the switch, they're still going to. They still listen. Yeah. And ah. they have that, that, because I was one of the first people that got these. And so that was one of my complaints. And they said, we listen to you. So we know that some people in the house might prefer to use their voice because I can control those. Oh, that's my nice. Amazon Echo. And, and I do that. When I go to bed at night, I say, both Echo and Google, I can choose. And they'd have different responses. So if I'm looking for a cheery male voice saying, okay, all the lights are turned off, mm -hmm. I ask Google Home. I say, Google, turn off the lights. And it turns off all the internet-connected lights, which I really like. You do that probably. Mm -hmm. yes. You have a scene. Yes. Yeah. And then with the coffee maker, too, you just press that big button on the front if you want to start it. Um, you don't have to use your phone. Yeah. So yeah. it's very easy. I, have, I love the motion sensors on the Hue lights. And then I go in my uh, office. And they're also set up so that they turn off after 15 minutes if they don't sense, sense motion. Which is a little bit of a problem when I'm sitting there like this watching TV. <laughs> the lights go off. But then I just go like this. And they come back on. That's, so that's, that's handy. Good. So while all your devices are working for you, you have uh, more time to concentrate on your taxes. Oh, my God. Don't remind me. April 15th is just around the corner. Actually, this year it's April 17th or something. Oh, so, yeah. It's the Monday after April 15th. Uh, that's still just around the corner. A mm -hmm. couple of weeks off. Literally two weeks off. Maybe it's time to get those taxes done. And that's on my to-do list for my mom. But the good thing is I use TurboTax. And there's two really good things about TurboTax. One, I know I can get it done fast and accurately. And, and even faster because, for instance, I can import all of her um, bank account information and her uh, investment account information directly in. So she has, she's, she had somebody doing her taxes. She's paying $500 a year. And I, said this, and I said, Mom, no, I'll do this. It's easy. I'll do it with TurboTax. It won't be a problem. And she said, well, now it's very complicated because I have some international stock funds and the taxes are different on that. And I said, yeah. TurboTax imports it. She's with Schwab. Schwab tells her, this is this, is this, this is this. I don't do anything. And I only charge her $400. <laughs> so that's a really good thing for mom. No, I love TurboTax. And now this new thing, TurboTax Live, is really, really cool. Because you can get a CPA or an enrolled agent, an EA, tax expert, right on your screen to review your taxes. I may use this with mom because she doesn't trust me. Did you do it right? She actually sometimes says, now ask Lisa if you did it right. From now on, I can just have her talk to her CPA or EA right on the screen. It's one way, by the way. They can't see you, but you can see them. 
And uh, you can do it as often as you need. So, and this is actually really helpful for mom because she always comes up with one more question. As many questions, as much advice as you need. You can even have the expert review your return before you file and make any necessary changes. And by the way, the new tax laws are in there. That, that really won't affect your return this year, but it will affect what you do this year for next year's return. And you want to know all that information. They know it. File with complete confidence with TurboTax Live. TurboTaxLive.com slash iOS today. You've got two weeks. I, I hesitate to say this, but I might. You could really do it the night before with TurboTax. It's so easy, but do it now. TurboTaxLive.com slash iOS today. For people who like to procrastinate, I gotta, I, I keep, every time I do this ad, I go, oh, I gotta do moms. TurboTaxLive.com slash iOS today. And I love this idea that, you know, if you have any doubts, get your questions answered by, by not just some schmo off the street. And by the way, when you go to those storefront guys, that's who you're getting. By a CPA or an EA. I know what an EA is because Lisa did the EA stuff. An enrolled agent. That's somebody who has been trained in tax law. You want people who know what they're doing. TurboTaxLive.com slash iOS today. All right. An app that we, you and I, have both recommended many times, My Fitness Pal, uh, had a little bit of a breach this week. So change your password. Not the only one. There was another breach. Uh, this was uh, just uh, revealed by Brian Krebs. Do you ever buy anything from Panera Breads uh, online? Like, do you ever go, like, Panera, you can say, I want a sandwich, and I'll be right there, and you do it online? They, I think they said 7 million accounts oh. leaked. But here's what's infuriating, and this is why we now need a new law that penalizes people. The, the law, and this is going to be in Europe with GDPR, and I think it should be here in the States, requires if there's a breach, you notify, you remediate, and you have to do that promptly. Panera Bread was notified about this flaw, and it was a flaw on their website. You could get all the information in plain text, and since every customer number was serial, you just put your number in, then put the next number, the next number, the next number, and you could get you could exfiltrate the whole database of all the information. You couldn't get the whole credit card number, just the last four, but you could get name, you could get address, you could get phone number, and they knew about it seven months ago, and they didn't do anything until Brian Krebs, the guy who found it, finally said, I give up called Brian Krebs and said, look, tell the world about this. This is ridiculous. He was trying to be responsible. I want to let Panera Bread fix it. They never did. So uh, Brian Krebs published in his in his column yesterday, and go oh, guess what? Panera fixed it right away. Ugh. Seven months. That's crazy. Well, um, the news I've heard is that my fitness will force you to change your password. As but, they should, and you should change it. But this is a problem. Yeah. Because we are signed up for all sorts of stuff. This is uh, Under Armour owns my fitness pal. It's just, uh, it's, we sign up for all sorts of stuff. We give them this information. They have a responsibility to protect it, and they don't do a good job. Yeah. So that it wasn't social security numbers. I think it was names, email addresses. Yeah, usually it's addresses. not anything. What, how many carbs you ate for breakfast. Right. Your password, though, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Did you see the grinder? <laughs> That's actually, to me, really offensive. Mm -hmm. Grinder, which is a gay dating, it's like a Tinder for uh, gays. Gay people is probably a better way they say it. Uh, and, uh, and it was revealing to third parties HIV status. Uh, I mean, apparently, if you post it on Grinder publicly and most recent test date, which you might do on a gay dating app, um, but you're posting in Grinder. You assume that they're not passing it along to others. Mm -hmm. They said, "Well, no, we, it's okay. We just uh, just a few people." I just this is so frustrating. This is why Facebook's in trouble, and I think these other companies. We need to start paying attention to this. Mm -hmm. Frankly, uh, Spotify went public this morning, so I thought that was um, worth talking about since they're a competitor. And it went off with a bang. Did you see that? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, I just got a notification. Let's see if I can uh, recover lately. that. Um, Spotify shares soar in initial trading, opening at $165.90. That's a $29.5 billion valuation. And Spotify, of course, is the king of this, even bigger than Apple. Uh, there were, was an article in the Wall Street Journal uh, 
which said Apple was going to catch up with Spotify. That has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. Spotify has almost, I think, 100 million, close to 100 million um, paid subscribers. Paid? Yeah, it was 70 million uh, a couple of months ago, and I think they're close to 100 million now. Yeah. And how many total users? Uh, 150, something like that. I mean, it's a lot more. Oh. It's huge. This yeah, is but why, but I'm not sure I'd buy stock in them just because I'd be worried about what is the, you know, they're yeah. at the mercy of the record industry. Right. They've got competitors breathing down their necks. I'm not. Um, we we don't buy uh, tech stocks, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to say one way or the other. The but I think I mean every one of Apple Music's subscribers are paid, and Spotify's. right they don't have a free tier. Yeah. So I'll give you the uh, as of December 31st at the end of the year, 157 active users, 71 million of them paid. Mm. Paid is uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Yep. I paid for Spotify for a year. Accidentally. Uh, I still pay for it. Yeah, accidentally. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> You never used it either, right? I did a few times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, now I'm all in on Apple Music. Okay, we need to talk about whether I can hold my cell phone up to my ear or put it in my pocket or not. Because am I getting cancer right now? So I have been saying for so long, I've probably even said on this show that there is no evidence that cell phones cause cancer or, or any health hazard. Uh, the World Health Organization put out an advisory last year saying... Exactly nothing. Like, we don't know. There's no conclusive evidence. But just in case, be careful, which I thought was really irresponsible. Because mm -hmm. if there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Well, now there's evidence. Uh, the National Toxicology Program, which is a, uh, a group of the National Institutes of Health in the United States, did a two-year study uh, of rats. Now, we got to say rats and mice, not humans. And they exposed the rats to the maximum amount of dosage, uh, of cell phone dosage. And the initial results from the researchers was inconclusive, that there wasn't, it was equivocal evidence, which is what we've kind of seen all along, which is, well, some of the rats got cancer, but rats do get cancer after a while, and we're not really sure it was caused by the radiation. But then, weirdly, in a review, a peer review, which happened last week, the peer review group upgraded the recommendation, which is not typical. In fact, it's, I don't think it's ever happened before. Normally, they either rubber stamp it or say, you know what, your methodology wasn't very good. We're going to downgrade it. But this time, the experts looked at the results, looked at the study. They said, this is a good study. It has some problems, but it's a, um, basically a very good study. And we think that at least in one case, the case of male rats, that there is conclusive evidence that radiation from cell phones caused heart tumors, cancers. So I still think, I mean, now they've passed these recommendations on to the FDA. The FDA is actually what's the, the government organization that will interpret this and, and then tell consumers. But I, I think I made a, you know, a promise to everybody that if any evidence did come out that was anything less than inconclusive or more than inconclusive, I would tell you. And that has happened now. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I'd like to know more. I, why did they upgrade it? Uh, see, there, there is this kind of feeling, this was what the World Health Organization did last year, there really ought to be a problem with this. We can't find any evidence, but there really ought to be a problem. And scientists, well, we don't want to take a chance, so just don't take a chance. Mm -hmm. But if there's no evidence, there's no evidence. And I'm worried that this may have happened again, that they said, well, even though the researchers, the people doing the study said there was no evidence or inconclusive evidence, we feel like, why take a chance so we're going to upgrade it? That's not the same. So I want to know more. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they were exposed to a lot of radiation. The reason that I'm skeptical is that the kind of radiation coming off of a cell phone is what they call non-ionizing. It doesn't have the kind of energy, the energy level, to damage cells. So any that's why it's hard to prove damage because you can't see any evidence of damage. And the other thing to remember is... <clears throat> that the power coming out of one of these devices or any device is reduced by the inverse of the square. So it goes down very, very quickly. Even a foot away, you're going to not even be able to, hardly be able to measure it. So if you wanted to be careful, I would say don't carry it on your person. Don't, really a bigger one is don't sleep on it. Don't put it under your pillow or put it, you laugh. I know. <laughs> people do that. Yeah, put it in maybe even another room, no, not no. for not Doesn't for cancer, to, but just well, for, for your reasons. own okay. sanity. But even on a bedside table a foot or two away is sufficient because it, it attenuates so quickly as you get far away. Uh, this In this case, the rats were like radiated 
a few feet away with the maximum dosage. I mean, it was a it was a pretty hardcore situation. Um, maybe if you have kids, you would want to think twice about having cell phones. The other thing that concerned me a little bit, and again, I'm not a I'm not a cancer researcher or a scientist, so correct me if I'm wrong. The guy who designed the study, who has retired, uh, the guy who designed the study said, um, well, just, you know, what I would recommend is use a wired headset, which is exactly, unless I'm wrong about the physics, the wrong advice, because the wire takes the radiation and puts it in your ear. Oh. So <laughs> I don't think a wired headset is the right answer either. So then that made me now suspect the whole thing, the whole thing. So just I, I think I owe it, we owe it to you to tell you that this res result came out. You could read the uh, review we just showed Scientific American, but the courts also had the study. Uh, you could read it for yourself. Um, I don't want to be the person who says, who represents the cell phone industry either and says, oh, there's no danger. Go ahead. Glue it to your head. <laughs> It's reasonable, you yeah. know, but now am I going to change my behavior? No, I carry it in my pocket. But if you're worried, put it in your briefcase, put it in your purse. Yeah. I mean, I've told my kids it's time to start keeping it in your backpack. I think that's good advice. Yeah. I think that's good advice. Um, and, and the reason why you say these things, like I promised you, I would tell you is that the tech press has gotten in trouble in the past or accused of maybe like hiding this because, oh, well, if we, we have say a, cell phones cause cancer, then you're going to stop reading our articles. You're going to stop listening to I'm our podcast. I'm not worried about that. No, I know. But that's why you said that, which and you obviously are not part of that, that you would say, you know, I'm not going to tell you. I'm more, I'm more concerned that, uh, about hysteria yeah, around fear. these things. Fear and, also Fear mongering. Yeah. And you know. There's people, there's a guy, he comes into our studio regularly, and it really annoys me, uh, who says Wi-Fi is bad for people mm -hmm. as he sits in our studio and uh, and is, is lobbying the local schools to take Wi-Fi out of the school. I think that's a big hazard because having internet access is important for students. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and there's no evidence that Wi-Fi causes any danger. And again, that's because the, the base stations are distant. You probably wouldn't want to sleep on top of a Wi-Fi router. That's just sensible. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got lots of feedback about our education episode last week. We asked for educators uh, to reach out to us. And uh, we got an email from Tom who says, I've worked as a tech coordinator at two public school districts and I've purchased huge quantities of iPads and Chromebooks. The clear winner has been the Chromebooks. Here's my take on the new iPad announcement. Nice try, but still too expensive. It isn't just the base cost, $2.99, that's tough on budget-strapped schools. It's the necessary add-ons. That's the pencil, $50, a rugged keyboard, maybe $60 in the sturdy case, $25. Without figuring in apps, we are well over $400. Another thing from an IT perspective, Chromebooks are far easier to manage, especially for push out new software and updates on mass love you apple but chromebooks win by a mile yeah it's uh there I, i've seen a whole bunch of um, different responses to apple's thing and we did we said educators let us know but the general tenor of the what i've seen has been has duplicated exactly what uh, your correspondent mm -hmm. has said i know lisa schmeiser who often appears on twit um tweeted about the accessibility issues that are that apple um features where Chromebooks don't necessarily Apple's have great that. for accessibility. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's something on the Apple side. Uh, Melissa also writes, I'm a business manager for a small school district in Oregon. Our district is all in on the Google ecosystem using Google Classroom and Chromebooks. I would agree with you and Leo from the iOS Today 327 episode that each educator is different and it's nice to have options from all computing platforms. I think Apple has some obstacles to overcome that Google has successfully navigated primarily in the area of deployment, durability, and cost. In reference to the discussion on the show about writing and using a glass screen, I use an iPad Pro daily with a screen protector that gives the feel of paper. It's called paper-like. I take handwritten notes on several apps, primarily good notes, OneNote, and Notability. These notes search my handwriting, and the iPad has become an extension of my brain. It stores multiple notebooks, years of notes from meetings, and provides a way to immediately look up and reference data and search emails. Our children are growing up in a different era, one where diaries will be written with journaling templates like iPlanner. Yes, even bullet journaling on the iPad or perhaps a Windows or Android tablet. So I, I ordered the paper like that Melissa said, and I'm gonna I'm gonna dedicate myself to writing only on the iPad with the Apple Pencil and see how it feels. Wouldn't want to write a novel that way. <clears throat> <laughs> no, 
know. That's typing, but um, I, there's a lot of things you know, I, I write. I take use, notes. Uh, yeah, I use Good Notes. I love it. Um, in fact, I'll show you what I do with it uh, because I have an Apple Pencil. This is one of the top no I, notability is nice too because you can take lecture notes and record the audio. But uh, for designing uh, computer programs, you need to do sketches like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I love doing that, A, is it's a sketch. <laughs> And I'm not very good at freehand, but GoodNotes uh, has the ability to use geometric uh, shapes and so forth. But also, uh, what I really like is uh, I can then capture this and put it in other things. I just, I feel like we've gone back and forth. You like handwriting. Mm -hmm. So for certain handwriting stuff, I think paper or GoodNotes or something like it is great. But I wouldn't want to write a business memo in handwriting. And I think these kids are going to be in a world, I know it's 10 years off for some of them, but they're going to be in a world where they do need to keyboard stuff mm -hmm. because uh, they work somewhere where they have to do memos or communicate. And, or, you know, and I would hope that they would be able to uh, keyboard. And I think that if you're going to, I wouldn't have wanted to write my school papers on an iPad, would you? And I hope Without they're still, yeah, I hope they're still writing school papers. They are. And they, um, yeah, sometimes they do they use them. They mostly use, a keyboard they'll do they... what we we're doing here which is they'll have a, a, a right a but keyboard. they don't have and that's acceptable i have to say that's not my choice you know this is the logitech slim keyboard combo logitech is making an 84 dollar rugged case for the uh school uh, oriented ipad uh, the new ipad um and these are you know it's not a bad keyboard it's frankly better than the macbook keyboard mm -hmm. but i again i wouldn't want to write anything really long on it and i certainly wouldn't run a write a uh, a thesis or a, or a book. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to, when I write your um, unauthorized biography. You'll probably, probably do it on a selectric. Yeah, probably. A typewriter. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine. Do you remember last week when we were discussing utils? Yes. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. And yes. uh, it was like how much you use and love something. Um, and we were like, does it I spell really like that y? word. Or, I forgot to use it more. I got so, Daniel, Randy, and so many others uh, reached out, <laughs> ba reached back into their own minds from their economics classes. It's U-T-I-L-S. Oh, utils. Utils. You, oh, not utils. Util of utility. Utils. No, but I like utils better. Yeah, utils. It's an economic The term. kids call it utils. Yeah, the kids these days. Uh, and as you know, Marco is an economics teacher, and that's where he, they did not, they thought they had heard it on YouTube, but in, in fact, their father had it's told real. them what it was. And so now Noodles. we also learned that what they learn on YouTube and learn from their father, they right. can't tell the difference. All right. We are going to start calling him Y O O D L E S. Yeah. I think it's time for a new show on Udles. how many Udles. Like, how many utils am I getting out of so this Apple Pencil? what is the technical unit of utility? How do you measure that? Uh, like, how much you use something. Like, okay. so it's not like, so this, uh, that coffee maker is $170, but I'm going to use it every single day. Right. And I love it. And um, it, you know, I'm going to use it for five years. Or like, am I only going to use it for six months? Because then the software is going to upgrade and I, you know, that kind of thing. That, so it's not about like the economic cost of something right not the money the right. monetary in micro economics happiness is measured by a concept called utility and the standard unit of that is the barrel <laughs> no, it's <laughs> the util the util utils and utility util has no concrete numeric value like an inch or a centimeter it's arbitrary and subjective but convenient a way to assign value to consumer choices and measure the consumer utility of one choice against another. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. So. And yeah. here's a new word, satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Boy, I guess economics econo economists like to make up words. Satisfying is a decision-making strategy that aims for a satisfactory or adequate result mm. rather than the optimal. Satisfying is it turns out what I do my whole life, what I've all I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, Just, that's it's, a, it's 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 basically the C average. Yeah, the gentleman's C. That's satisfying. That's me uh -huh. in the a nutshell. The unauthorized nutshell. biography. Satisfying. Satisfist. The unauthorized biography of Leo Laporte. Satisfist. <laughs> he was satisfist. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Got a title. Love it. I mean, maybe it'll be authorized. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> It just depends on how this goes. I saved I that bear an emoji. I saved that bear an emoji. <laughs> it's going in it. Satisfist. Um, okay, I think maybe we have time for one more 
question. What do you、mm. think? This is kind of a tough one. Are you ready for a tough I, one? Yes, you didn't. By the way, you did not prepare me for this. I、so. did not. He is not prepared.、So、off the top of my head. Ferlin from Ontario asks I am new to the iPhone. All of my smartphones have been Android. He's a newbie,、wow. so we better please him or else. But now, since the rest of my family all have iPhones, I have caved into the pressure. My question is about using my iPhone 7 Plus in my 2009 Pontiac G5 using the aux cable. I like to listen to your podcast while I'm driving. I have an hour commute, and the problem is if I receive a text or I want to talk to Siri when I prompt it, she is very low in volume. I've had to really crank up the volume to even hear the notification coming in because if I've got your podcast set up to a perfect level, I will not hear any notification or even phone calls. How、That's、do you、puzzling. adjust the volume of Siri? While listening to a podcast. So he uses the Apple Podcast app.、Um, that, that I asked him. And, you know, there's, there's some really weird things where there's the change with buttons in settings that even then, when you were trying, your phone was ringing before and you were trying to turn it off and it kept going. Like, there's some things that are in these settings that don't always work like I would want them to well, work. Well, to be fair, it kept going on my watch. Oh, okay. And then the watch noticed that I had do not disturb the phone and then it said, okay. So, in sound and haptics, there's this change with buttons thing that I've never really, like, I guess it's like you can turn that off. Uh. And、huh. then, so that's. You really want.、Uh, uh, but、nonsense. what I would suggest is set the volume on your phone all the way up, plug it into your Pontiac, and then set the volume on your Pontiac at a normal volume to hear it. So. What I'm concerned is that he has the volume low on the phone and is turning up the volume. That shouldn't make any difference, but I'm just saying turn the phone volume all the way up. Is there, oh, is there, here's a question. Is there a separate volume control for music and alerts? That's See, what he's、I've、used to、wondered. it on, on an Android device. There's actually three separate volume controls, and there used to be for ringtone, alerts, and media. And there used to be on the iPhone a distinction between alerts and media. Which I always found complicated and confusing, and I think they eliminated that.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, is it still in there or no? Not under sound and haptics, if it's、okay. in something else. So there's, they don't make the distinction. Now, he said it's an older iPhone, so it may be a 7 Plus. But yeah, well, whether he's. 7 Plus isn't that old. But whether it's by the operating system, right? Or is it by the phone? Yeah, no, it's by.、Uh, so that was. That, remember that, that you could have different volumes. For and and I think you still do. I think what Apple did is they just took the setting out of system settings and now you do it while you're in whatever it is you want to turn up. So if the phone's ringing and you turn up the volume, this is my memory of what happens, that'll turn up the phone ringing volume, but it won't affect media volume.、Mm. So, so, and that's confusing because how are you supposed to set alerts,、uh, the level of alerts? Only when you get an alert. But I think Apple decided not to make that in the, put that in the settings anymore. But I do think they still make the distinction. So that's, a, that's actually a great question. On, a, on, a, on an Android phone, there's actually in the settings on most Android phones three different volumes, and, and each are discrete. So you can you have your ringtone be one level, your alerts be another level, and your audio, your media be another level. That's obviously what he's used to. He wants that same kind of control on an iPhone. And while I do think the iPhone makes that distinction between alerts and media, and maybe even between alerts, media, and ringtones, I don't think they put it in the settings anymore. So, how do you change that? I, I think you have to, the, you know, turn up. How could he do this? Maybe turn down while you're listening to the podcast, turn it down and turn your. Try this. This is. Counterintuitive. It's the exact opposite of what I said earlier, which was turn your phone all the way up and then turn your Pontiac down. What if you did this? While you're listening to the podcast, turn the podcast down and beef up the Pontiac volume to make it a normal level. My guess is be, that yeah, this is all predicated on the notion that the media volume on an iPhone is different than the alert volume. So let's say they're both here. What you're doing, this is your alert volume, and you want to hear those alert tones. Is you're turning down this volume, the, media, the podcast volume, and then boosting it all up with the Pontiac to make it、mm -hmm. so that this sounds normal. That will also boost up the alert town. It may even be painful at that point, but at least you'll hear it. So I think that might be, I mean, that's kind of tricky. It's the opposite of what you think, which is 
turn down the the uh, media noise and then turn up the Pontiac. And I think you might, if they're discreet, and I think they still are discreet, don't you think? I, I don't know. And does it make a difference is if he's using an auxiliary cable versus Bluetooth? No. Okay. Um, and the other thought I had at first was that maybe he has do not disturb while driving on, but he said Siri also was low. So you should be Yeah, Siri's an alert. Uh, that's when you could turn it up is get Siri to start talking and turn it up quickly. <laughs> turn it quickly. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think it does. Okay, let's try this. Hey, okay, shh, turn off my mic here. I'm going to do that. Hey, Siri, what time is it? It's 11.01 a.m. Good morning. And it just says volume. It doesn't, it used to say, uh, you know, ring, let's, hmm. It may, it may be Apple no longer distinguishes the, the different mm. kinds of volumes. If you know the answer. <sighs> that's a good one. Know. I like that. Yeah, and it's and it, it's something that's bothered me in the past about the iPhone. And they never, it was always a little confusing that there were these discrete volume levels. Mm -hmm. Either you should have no settings for it and it should all be the same level. Mm -hmm. Or you should have settings for it. And Apple's kind of done neither. They've kind of got in the middle. So we've made our coffee with our phones. I want some more. Can I have some more? Yes. While I talk yes. a little bit about Rocket Mortgage. Right. Let's get a mortgage with our you phones. You know what? How about if you could get a home loan in the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee? What? Would that be awesome? I'll try. No, no going to the bank. <clears throat> oh, yeah. The banker will offer you a nice stale cup of coffee, mm. but that's not, I'm not talking about that. No more going to the bank. No more filling out long application forms. No more going up to the uh, attic to get your pay stubs from 2012. All of this can be done quickly and easily with the biggest, best lender in the country, Quicken Loans. Number one in customer satisfaction, year after year, I think eight years running. Also the largest lender in the country. And I'm happy to say the most technologically savvy. And they've created something very nice for the people who use, uh, you know, want to, use smartphones or computers or tablets, a completely, it's for us basically, a completely online way to apply for a home loan. No going to the bank, no going to the attic even. And you can do it in the time it takes to have a cup of coffee. So here's what you do. When you're at an open house, say, <laughs> you pull out your phone and you go to rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. That's the address, rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Answer a few simple questions you know off the top of your head, no research required. Name, address, birth date social, that kind of stuff. They have trusted relationships with all the financial institutions. So they say, with your permission, we'd like to get all the rest of the documentation we need. You don't have to do it. They do it. They go into your digital attic and they get all that stuff. And then they crunch the numbers and based on your income, your assets, and your credit, they analyze all the home loan options for which you qualify and then find the one that's right for you. You choose the term, the rate, the down payment. It's completely transparent. It's very simple. And then you're going to mortgage with confidence because you you it, it's all happened right there. Oh, even if you're not buying right now, go there, rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today, set up the account, get started. And that may, it'll take even less time when you need the loan, when you're at a house and you say, I want to, we want to make an offer. And you can actually hold up your phone and it says, you're approved. There's even a button. I love it. For the old school uh, realtors, it says, print out a letter for your realtor to prove it rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Apply simply. <laughs> Apply simply. Understand fully. Mortgage confidently. <laughs> rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Be very quiet. I'm getting a home loan. <laughs> and the, in the time it took to get a cup of coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Your ear flaps are up. You know that, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, all right. We're wearing caps. Oh, you're wearing a deer stalker, Mr. Holmes. I am. Should I put my ear flaps Ms. down Holmes? too? No. The deer stalker is not flattering with the flaps it's down. It's not? No. I think it is. Yeah, okay. and your deer stalker um, bonnet. Okay, well now you look okay. you look like a beagle. Okay. <laughs> You're one to talk. <laughs> I want to arrange them like yours. Okay, so we're wearing these beautiful hats. Because it's app cap time. It is. That means the app that we uh have been playing or using or um I don't know what, uh doing with 
That's what we're going to talk about. And my app is a game. Mine is too. Oh, good. Have you played Witness by Jonathan Blow? It sounds familiar. He also uh, did Braid. And, oh, yeah. Um, Braid was amazing. These were PC games, but now they're on iOS. Yeah, so. I think I have Witness on Steam. I, I have do. Braid for sure. Okay. Braid was a great game on Steam. Yeah, so uh, let's load a new game. Let's start a so new he's game. So this is one of those. I think this is a, a genre in all of itself. The beautiful, beautiful sounding, kind of creative, not shooting people mm -hmm. games. I want to see more of these. And this is a I, Witness Mm, oh, you're so, in a hall. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a hallway. I'm Ooh. tapping the screen to get to this doorway. Is Kelly Gillis at the end of, this, <laughs> of, of the rainbow there? I don't know. This is, a, it's kind of reminded me of Mist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which we played in the They're old very days much influenced on a by computer. The, by the Mist, yeah. yeah. Um, and so Ooh, look at that. I get there. I'm going to oh. tap and hold the circle. Tap and hold the circle. Yeah. And then open the door. Ooh. <gasps> And then I'm going to go out to the world. You are in a long, dark hallway. <gasps> oh. And so then I see this. Pretty garden. Yes. So I see this maze thing that has a hose coming out of it. And then uh -huh. I'm going to tap and hold the circle and do the maze. you got to solve the maze to get mm -hmm. to the end. Oh, you're good. And then. I've been follow playing. the yellow then, brick hose. Yes. <laughs> follow the yellow brick hose. Uh, follow, so, follow, or maybe follow, I'll follow, follow this brown hose. Ooh. I can, I can do whatever I feel like it. Really, mm. I can just hang out. I can wander around. Perhaps that's the the what I should just do. Oh, I'm do. getting this. This looks great. Um. Yeah. Uh oh. I guess I can't do that. Puzzle when do you yet. get weapons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe there have there are any weapons. What? Um. It's just puzzles. What kind of game oh, did is I, that? I solved that puzzle. Um, follow the yellow brick hose. Follow. Okay, so maybe here's, not. I don't know. I mean, do you have to uh, make them all gold? I have to make them all gold. Ah. Um, and now I see what. Uh, so I have to find and solve all the puzzles. Is that forsythia? What is that oh, beautiful no. purple lilac? Oh yeah. Yeah, lilacs. Um. So or where lilacs, do I go next? As help. Kelly Gillis would oh, say. Oh, is this a puzzle that I can solve? <clears throat> I think yes, so. it is. Oh, this is a hard one. Okay. All right. Do you, do you want to take some time to think about it? Uh, Maybe you should. Oh, I, I think I messed it up. Wait, uh, where do I go now? I think I... Uh, where do I go? Where do you think I go? Here? Now where? This is a really hard one. Nope, nope, nope. This way? What now? What now? Where do I go? Did I already do it wrong? Can't get there from here. Oh. Where? You're out of luck. Maybe start with the other dot. Do... Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the first thing. Yep. Left. Right. This way? Left. Oh. Right. Wait, now what? No. Left. Left. Down. <laughs> this is yeah, hard... yeah, yeah. Left. Keep going straight. Keep going down. straight. No, 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 no. Up, down. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Ding dong. So it's a lot like that. You made a yellow hose. Yeah. Um, we could keep going, but you get. Or the is picture. it a ribbon? I think. I think I mean, it's, it's an empty hose. A light. It's a. It's a hose of light, <laughs> and then we want to unlock all of the mazes, and then probably we'll unlock that door. I haven't gotten that far yet. Mm. Um, so, I think this is going to be another one of those shows where my app cap versus your app cap really shows a the lot di about dichotomy <laughs> between the, the two things that we're interested. Let me in. put it this way: I've got armor in my hunting cap. Oh, you've you just do? got a brain in your deer oh. stalker. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. keep trying to solve my puzzles. Maybe I'll sit down That's in the nice. chair and rest for a while. Smell I like the flowers. That. I love. I have to say, uh, Mister, what's his name? Jonathan, Jonathan Blow. Blow is very good at the gaming. It's nine ninety nine. It's not cheap. Ooh, but you know, it's hours, hours of, of fun. fun. Hours of fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get that. That's okay. nice, and it's pretty, isn't it? Don't you think that's pretty? Yeah, it's very pretty. You know, so is uh, so is the world of PUBG. So last week I showed you Fortnite which is the Battle Royale game that I prefer because it's a little cartoony. It has building as well as shooting. Uh, I just really love Fortnite. But there are people who are fans of PUBG, which is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. 
and it is now available for iOS. So help me put some underwear on. That's you know wow. my my kids uh, seventh grade English teacher plays a lot of this. They said PUBG is fun. Yeah, I thought they were making it up. PUBG, so but make, what does it stand name. for again? Player Unknown's Battleground. Player Unknown's Battleground. And can you play just in underwear, or do you have to have clothes? Uh, you're gonna get some stuff. Okay. So you get to to choose your spec requirement. Let's see. Hi, because I'm on an iPad Pro. Look at that. And collect my little uh, BPs. Okay. This is kind of like living in the oasis. You know, I can put on a black shirt and all that stuff. We'll see all that later. Uh, these are all leak logging. I guess I'm going to be playing in my underwear. Okay. Now you... <laughs> okay. Let's do the tutorial. What do you say? All right. Um, team mode, solo, duo, or squad. You know, if you play the uh, solo, you're playing one against 100. Last man standing. Uh, you start with 100 combatants. Parachute onto an island. Procure your own supplies. Avoid the red zone as it contracts and be the last man standing. Pretty straightforward controls. This is actually very much like Fortnite. Remember I talked about how I like native controls? But these aren't. There's your parachuting, your backpack, your weapons, your throwables, your consumables, your vehicles. Yes, there's even swimming. Shall, shall we play? If I want to play in a squad, can I play like on the same Wi-Fi network? You can invite people? your friends. Okay. Yeah. And you don't even have to be on a Wi-Fi network. You can invite your friends. So we're going to join a server, a PUBG server. Okay. You can play. This started out as a, uh, a PC game. <clears throat> you can uh, it, uh, play it on Xbox. Okay. Now, by the way, little tip here. Good idea to practice your moves before you get... <laughs> on the airplane, it's really strange. That he's Wait, in his do you underwear. have to pay actual money for the clothes? No, well, I don't know. No, not actual money. Okay, you have to earn it though. Oh, you're gonna find supplies. I don't know why I'm the only guy in his underwear. <laughs> you have a Is right this like and you a have nightmare? A left. Like you just woke up in PUBG. I woke up in PUBG. In your underwear? In my underwear. Watch <laughs> out! I, is he wearing shoes? I think this is dangerous. Jumping around <laughs> in the in this uh, playground. Pretty soon the, the match will start. It's, it's just getting all the people. Okay. And then we'll be in the plane. Are you doing this by yourself? Or are you? Do you have a squad? Oh, no. There's people. I mean, but are, no, are I'm you doing, squatted I'm, up? Oh, see, he doesn't have any clothes on are either. Are you planned up or what? Look, he's in his underwear too. <laughs> I guess that's how you could tell if somebody's a noob. Hey, dude. <laughs> I'm going to beat him up because he's not wearing any clothes. Can you play as a lady in her underwear? Yes, you can. Okay. That makes Don't it more that, fun. But... I partic I exactly didn't do that. Thank you. I noticed the option and I didn't do it. So now we're flying into the island. This, if you played Fortnite with me last week, you, this will be kind of familiar. There's really a similarity. I think PUBG uh, predated uh, Fortnite. It's more realistic. So if you're a Call of Duty player, you might prefer this. If you're uh, an Overwatch player, you might prefer Fortnite. That's kind of the difference. Is Fortnite is more like cartoony. Um, shall we jump? Let's get yeah. over. Let's get over somewhere we want to be, and I'm going to jump out. Are you now, still just in your underwear? Yeah, it, perishing in your underwear. You've never experienced such freedom. <laughs> it's just such a blast. Let's try to get somewhere. It's it's very similar. Yeah, thing. it's the same idea, isn't it? You almost feel like one stole it from the other. Oh, that's where I want to go. I want to go over here. Come on. What kind of person plays PUBG versus the kind of person that plays Fortnite? Um. Someone who likes more realistic games would play I, PUBG? I, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, probably. I really prefer Fortnite for the gameplay because you can build stuff. PUBG is really more realistic guns, and uh, uh, maybe people prefer that for that reason. I, you know, I'm not good enough to have a preference based on, like, how well the game works. Although I've heard many people complain that PUBG is, which is still kind of in beta, is, uh, is a little rough. But uh, and I'm certainly not an expert in terms of mechanics. Like, well, you gotta play PUBG because it's got the better sniper rifle. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how that works. So let's. Uh, so we're gonna go right now. We're gonna go to this town because we need some clothes. <laughs> uh, let's. But we'll, but you gotta search now. Now it it it'll show how many people are here. No, uh, there's a hundred alive and zero active. I well, I can drive it. <gasps> That's pretty awesome. Drive it a car. You've never driven a dune buggy. Not in PUBG. Until you've done it with no clothes on. Okay, see that restricting the area? So what happens in order to keep make this game interesting oh. is um, they, they, they close down the gameplay area to force everybody in the same area. So 
Otherwise, the game would pretty much go on forever. So they force you together. Oh, let's see. Let's go into this town here. Okay. Let's Perhaps see. you could make some clothes out of that tall grass. <laughs> I'm going to find some armor, which really would be more useful than clothes at this point. Open that I don't know if you can put armor on your bare skin like that. that There's a gas sense. can. Take that. Oh, never know when I'm going to need that. Let's go upstairs. Another nice thing, but there's another gas can. <laughs> another nice thing. And a smoke grenade. Yeah, baby. What I really want now is a weapon. What's that? You could that? wrap yourself in that rug. I got a backpack. So now I'm a naked guy in a backpack. <laughs> Let's get... Oh, police vest. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay, good, good. Good. I'm, at least I got something on. Is Let's it Kevlar? Look. Let's look at the art, uh, artwork. Oh. Very beautiful. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you get the idea. There hasn't been any shooting yet. Nobody's. There are four people died, but nobody was killed. So it sounds like people fell off of things. You died very quickly uh, in Fortnite, if I recall. Yeah, last week. and uh, and uh, this will get this will get hairy soon. Mostly that was because I apparently walked in. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got weapons now. Now I don't feel so naked because uh, give a man uh, a jock strap. And he, he'll eat for a week, but give him a AR. Oh, somebody's shooting at me, and I'm dead. So, <laughs> where are all the mazes and pretty flowers? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I really like about Fortnite is you get to then follow the person who killed you and the person who kills mm -hmm. that person, and you can go. You really get to watch the whole game unfold, which is it's really fun to watch, as you can see here. Unless I'm missing something, I'm out of the game. I'm done. I can't see what happened. And I really like the idea of being able to see uh, what happens. So I did level up, which is which is good. Maybe I'll get some clothes. Well, you I don't still know. have underwear. Hmm. Uh, next week, I will not be here. But you know who will be? Micah Sargent. Oh, I thought this guy. No. <laughs> we will probably ask Micah Sargent to wear clothes. Micah is great, and he's a Mac uh, fanatic. Mm -hmm. And he's been on the show before, right? This mm -hmm. isn't his first yes. time. No. He's already preparing the hat that he's mm -hmm. going to wear. Yep. So I know he's That's taking this seriously. That yeah, that'll be fun. Where are you going? I'm going to New York City. <gasps> For uh, what? Uh, just Annabella, my daughter, and I are taking a trip because she had a different spring break than the kids and so the boys. That's so much fun. Um, so, so now so that you have my fun. address and you, you know the layout of my house, my uh, she'll dog, be in New York next um, week. My husband and my boys will still be there. So, <laughs> but last time you took the boys to DC. Now mm -hmm. you're now you're doing the Annabella trip. Mm -hmm. That's great. And what yes. are you going to do in New York? We're going to see Mean Girls <gasps> on Broadway. Fun. It's open, and we're going to see Waitress on Broadway. Oh, great! Um, my cousin lives there. My sister is you coming got two too. Shows. And you've got to go have a frozen hot chocolate. Oh, where? At um, what's the name of it? Um, oh, I'll, I'll remember the name. Okay. It's right next to uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. So that's what I did with Abby. We went to Saks, did a little shopping, and then we went and had a frozen, um, I think Millennium, is it Millennium 3, something like that? Mm, okay. uh, oh, yeah, the best. It's um, a, a mother-daughter thing. Okay. Everybody does it. You'll well, see a lot yes. of mothers and daughters there. And I will be with my sister, who doesn't have any daughters, except um, my daughter, who's actually my daughter, and my cousin. Um, You're going to so, have so much fun. Yes, it That's will nice. be fun, and, and yeah, you will have saying, fun here. Get a papaya king. Don't. <laughs> okay. Just don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be staying in uh, Red Hook. Not oh, this. Red Hook. Yeah. Nice. So, mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. So you'll Very have to do fun. without me. Yeah. Um, Carson's going to help you. Serendipity produce. three. Serendipity. Right behind three. Saks. Okay. Go to Serendipity and have a frozen hot oh, chocolate. It is so good. It looks good with your daughter. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. It's all the moms do it. Okay. I want to. I want to be like all the moms. Obviously. I did it. I'm a dad, and okay. I still did it. Okay. <laughs> it was so much fun. Yeah. Um. But this show will go on. Um. Same time. Nine-ish. <laughs> Nine-ish. Nine-ish. No, I'll be on time for Micah. Okay. Because I respect him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. We do this I, can, I wasn't even paying attention to no, that. No, no, I know. Yeah. I'm going to put a hat on Betty. Okay. Uh, Nine-ish. Uh, that's the Pacific time. That'd be about noon-ish East Coast time. And it'd be about 1600-ish. UTC. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch live, go to twit.tv slash live. We have live streams on Twitch, Ustream, and YouTube. They're all there. There's also live audio streams, uh, which you can listen to on your your HomePod or your Echo or your Google. 
And that's actually nice. That's a good way to, to listen to the show because you can be doing housework and stuff uh, while you're listening. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also uh, get on-demand versions after the fact, not just on your uh, Echo or your HomePod, but also at our website, twit.tv slash iOS, or wherever you subscribe to podcasts like Apple Podcasts or, you know, any, anything, Google mm -hmm. Podcasts, whatever, whatever you use, Overcast. Um, but do please subscribe. That way you'll get every episode the minutes ready. And each episode includes fun hats. So mm -hmm. You took yours off early. I feel They're yours now. to keep. Well, I, I felt like <laughs> Betty was chilly. Okay. I was getting. Got it. All right. She's we'll see you working. next week. Well, you, well, you'll see Leo and Micah mm -hmm. Sargent next week. On iOS today. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.